Hi there! Welcome to Moving On TV and the Community Show. And I'm at the studio in Maiden End. I've got two lovely ladies doing amazing, amazing things. I've got Sue Brett, um, who is the found founder of the Brett Foundation, yes. which is the homeless um, space here in Maiden End, which we're going to talk yes. about. Yes. And I've got Catherine, her daughter, yes. um, who assists her, is that yes. right? Yeah, yeah, one of the trustees. Fantastic. So there you go. So the Brett Foundation, where did that come from? Oh gosh. Um, well, it started in 2010 when I was walking with a different daughter in town and saw two homeless people, only teenagers, and I thought they can't possibly be homeless, they're too young, they're probably just sitting there asking for money, um, but they were there night after night in awful weather, and eventually I spoke to them and they were homeless, and they said there was nothing in Maidenhead, nothing at all to... to for them to go to for food or shelter or even just to get off the streets for a respite for, for an hour or two. So I decided something needed to be done um, and I, I'm not very good at just looking for things. It's sort of, if I've got an idea, if something needs doing, you just have to do it. You get up and so you, do you it. just get up and you do it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, right, I'm going to set up uh, an evening meal, and it was the first of its kind in Maidenhead. Um, there was no evening meals at all, and I thought an evening meal because then they're warm. Although they're going back to sleep on the streets, they've got something warm in their tummies. It, it makes it a little bit better. Mm. Um, so we started doing that, and within three months, we then expanded to five nights a week. I took my wow. car into the car park at the town hall. And was giving out hot food from the car, oh, right. car park there. You were doing this outside. I was doing it oh, outside. I see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm a bit of the from car. the boot of my car. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Fantastic. And we were given premises to do one night a week in, inside a church hall, which we we started doing. But families were turning up, and I thought this is awful. Mm. You can't have babies and toddlers running around at nine o'clock at night. With homeless people not the fact that they were homeless but just they needed to be at home mm -hmm. you can't have children that age running around but if they didn't come to us for food they didn't have anything and they didn't have warmth they we had one family turn up that were heating their baby or, or, or keeping their baby warm over a candle because oh they'd run God. out of mm. electricity so i decided i was going to use then I thought food waste. I thought we'll mm. just have food waste. We'll f give it to these families; they can take it away. Right. And the food bank was born. That's okay. The food bank was born. Um, but the trustees of the food bank, food food share, were getting a bit nervous because when you deal with people who are on the straight streets and don't have food, there's so much else they need. Mm -hmm. And I started doing things under my own name. And they You're said, a brave lady. <laughs> "I love it. It's taking the initiative." Oh, yeah. Yeah, and mm. they just said, look, we're not really comfortable. Um, as you're doing this in your own name, how about setting up a charity in your own name and just continuing what you're doing? And so the following year, the Brett Foundation was born. Wow. <laughs> and from that comes school uniforms, holidays. We provide um, Christmas for people. This time of year is so full on. Mm. Um, Easter eggs. And the idea is that we level the playing field so that if you're in poverty nobody need know you get a little bit of the same as everybody else mm. okay so is it particularly in the maiden and area or do you branch out anywhere else um mainly maidenhead but we have been asked to branch out we'll go anywhere if somebody says there's a homeless yeah. person in henley we'll go to henley or if there's one in slough we'll go to slough or can you help somebody in windsor we'll go to windsor yeah. mm -hmm. Poverty knows no boundaries, and yeah. so we don't either. So you cover all those areas. Now, you started out in the car park, but you have got a centre in Maidenhead, yes. near the Odeon, right? Yes. The... yes. How did that happen? Yes. How did you manage to attract a proper centre? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, a bit you need to mentor. <laughs> I need a mentor. Uh, well, <laughs> we... we... <laughs> The food bank was being run from my garage at home and oh, okay. it was growing and growing. So a, a company said to us, we have an office, you can have an office. So we moved it from the garage to this office. Just like that, um, they offered it to you? Yeah. Well, they did. They offered it on a short short term. Okay. Um, and it was brilliant, but it was at the top of 30 very, very steep 
steps. But when you're lugging food yeah. up and down, it's heavy. Yeah. So we approached the council and we said, this really isn't working, have you got anything? And they said yes, and they gave the food bank the premises that we're in now. Mm. Well, the food bank's just been growing and growing, and another charity said, look, we've got this space, New Market, you can have that. So the food bank moved there, and I might have forgotten to tell the council that I was still in that property, and so our centre was yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. You've just <laughs> got to get on with it. Yeah. Well, You've got to get on with it, because if you sit there waiting for everything and all these policies, you're going to go on forever. I mean, I, I get red tape. I understand. It's there to protect people. It really is, and I, and I really get it. But sometimes you have to go under the red tape and do yeah. it, and then worry about it afterwards mm -hmm. and then start cutting it yeah and i think the council have been quite good to us they, I th you know they, they allowed us to keep the center and i think they are trying to help us find another home nothing's come up yet mm -hmm. um but i like to believe that they are going to try and help us mm. um yeah well, I think we should all do it together. Oh, yes. <laughs> we should all do it together for the good of um, the community. So, coming back to, are you any? Are you a CIC? Are you a charity? Have you become a proper? We we are. Yeah. You are yes, now yeah, proper registered charity. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because it's really interesting when you say you got out there and you you started uh, the food bank and you did all of this. Where did you get all the food? Where did you get all the money? Um, Is this funded by yourself? Well, we didn't get a lot of money. In fact, we still don't get a lot of money coming in. It's um, donations. It's The community is fantastic. And if you ask and show them a way to help people, they will jump at it. They mm, will yeah. really do it. And you put an appeal out on Facebook and say, we need tins of pasta or tomatoes or, yeah. or we need clo Baby clothing clothes. like coats. Yeah. yeah. And we are swamped. They are the community is amazing. What you can yeah. do if you club together, you it's can really move mountains. Yeah. You really can. Uh, isn't this amazing? You see, what we do with Moving On TV, guys, is you know, we put on people that are positive, that are full of joy, and, and they're going out there and contributing. You know, you won't see this on, on any, anywhere else anymore for some reason. But moving on TV, we are pushing it. We're pushing it all the time because we want people to know about all the good stuff that's out there. You see, I never even heard of the Brett Foundation until I went to Janine's uh, fair and I met, right. um, oh, I can't remember her name. She came to see me, someone who works with you. At Lily. Hayley, oh, Hayley, 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 which yeah. is the big Love personality, she is. and she best. started, yeah. and I thought, wow, that sounds so exciting, that sounds amazing, I've got to get you on here, because people are drowning in misery, mm. and worry, yeah. and fear, and so, you know, now I know you're there, I want to know everything, so, <laughs> so coming back to, so you're now settled in, in a space near the Odeon, where, where is that exactly? Um, it's 49 King Street, so we are literally right on the very corner. We're next to the William Hill betting shop, and we are at the traffic lights where you cross to go to the cinema. Okay. So, but we are on, on notice there, because yeah. they are knocking it all down. They're so not okay. we are looking frantically for somewhere yeah. else to go. Okay. And 1st of January. And the 1st of January. So we get 24 hours. Like, they can serve us 24 hours. Can they really? Right, okay. Yeah. Okay, because I was going to say, uh, so you're open all through the Christmas period, are you? Yes. And are you looking for people to, do you, do you just take on volunteers? Or say someone wants to help you out, what is the process? Do they have to go through a long process of getting DBSs? And no. How does just, it work? Just contact us or turn up at the centre and say, I would like to help. We, wow. We've got people, managers, um, who are fantastic. Yeah. And we say, come in and just give it a try. See if you like it. Because it's not for everybody. You know, mm. we, we are dealing with people that can be volatile, that turn up yeah. drunk, mm -hmm. they're high. Um, you know, can be a little bit unpredictable. Mm. Uh, but that's life. And you mm. just have to accept them for, for yeah, what they are at that are. moment in time. Mm. Because yeah. that is them at that moment in time. But mm. we're family. And not yeah. everybody wants finds that comfortable. You're very brave. 
um, to get on with it. Um, a couple of years ago, in 2015, I ran something called the Hope Center in the center of High Wycombe, because I, you know, I call myself Lauren Hope. And it was similar in the way that we didn't offer food, but we offered a space for everyone to come in. And I found that everyone that came in, they just felt that they could just let go. Yeah. And, and you were able to tap into the potential. Yeah. Yes. So what you're doing is, is you're giving them um, something that's helping them to build their self-esteem, yeah. And I know that we have also, we've got the churches together, we have the homeless shelter from November to March in High mm. Wycombe. And before I brought my leg, I used to volunteer there regularly. And they used to see, you. it was like you were an angel. You know, it's like you. people see you in such a light when, when you go in there, even if you just make their breakfast or give them a piece of toast. It's, it's such a good thing to do, to be able to volunteer. Yeah. We're going to take a break because we have to put on some adverts because we're a TV station. And then we're going to come back after the break. And when we come back after the break, I just want you to tell me a little bit of what you feel the future holds. Mm -hmm. And what we, Moving On TV and the public, hopefully you're watching, can do to support you and how to get more involved. No, rien, de rien. Oh, I love you too, Marcel. Mm, mm. Oh, bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> I want to wear my face to the audience as I would a laver. And that is why I refuse to wear the makeup and the products, not unless they are organic. Because they make me feel nude. <laughs> so, come on board, organic makeup companies, moving on TV.uk. Bonjour. No, no, no. There, welcome to Moving On TV, the station that gives you hope. You know we are sponsored by Martin Ottawa Hypnotherapy. And today, Martin Ottewell is here to give us a session to help us um, to how to use hypnotherapy and to show you how a trance actually operates. To deal with things in a relaxed manner as they appear. Nothing and no one can upset you or deflect you from your purposes life goals and your inner confidence and the new you and the self-confident Lauren will be ready for the whole world to see. Get ready now Lauren. Three, eyes open, fully awake, relaxed and calm. Welcome back Lauren. Thank you for listening. Wow. Thank you. Wow. That was really, really nice. That was really, really nice. Um, I'm, I'm going to take, we're going to take a break. Hey guys and welcome back. Welcome back to Moving On TV and the community show. And I'm happy to say I should be able to edit this one quite quickly because as you know Ellie, my cat, decided to jump on my laptop and smash the screen. But it's back now and she's banned from the lounge. Sorry about that Ellie. <laughs> anyway, a little bit of comedy there. So what I love about this is you get on with it. You get out there and you get on with it. So how... Just a question about things like grants and support, financial support, because I know that I am doing everything I can to get grants for moving on TV. And I'm hit with policies. Pol like, for example, if there's a wire, it has to be under the table. You know, things like the light might burn your head. <laughs> Sorry, with all due respect, you know, I have to cover myself with all these things. So you're working with a lot of people. 
uh, in a space where people are coming to you with the problems I expect and a lot of them have got mental issues. So mm. how are, are you able to go for grants? How are you able to cover yourself? Um, we don't get grants. No, right. I have um, tried. Yeah. A few times. Yeah, we don't. I mean, A, I'm a really bad grant applicant person anyway. Tell me about it. I was hoping you were going to mentor me. <laughs> oh gosh, no. Okay. Um, but we get a lot of private donations. Yeah. People really support the work we do. And, Fantastic. And we deal with a lot of second-hand things. If I need something, I will just say I need a new cooker mm. or a fridge. or And people come yeah. through and they, they provide. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't... Yeah. We've just started yeah. really applying or, or asking for money because we've got a couple of we, we've got a halfway house where we house the homeless. You house them as well now. We house them as well, yes. Because we were talking about that before. Yeah. So yeah. you are, so tell me a bit about that then because <laughs> how do you do this, Sue? I mean, um, all due respect, it's incredible. Um, but most of the time, people say, "Well, you can't do that." You can't do that without this and without that and without safety and without. Yeah. But you're like me. You just get out there and you do it. So, how how do you manage to get over all of this in well, the world that we're living in, particularly, you know, with all the rules and regulations and fear? Um, but there's no such word as can't. No, it's made up of can and not. Yeah. So yeah, if if you say can't, it's yeah. you decide not to. Mm. Um and. I just, we just do it. I just drag yeah. them along. <laughs> but it, it, it is down to what we were saying earlier about the community. Maidenhead is an incredible community and the house was given to us by a very generous person. Someone gave you a house? Yeah, I mean they haven't put it in our name but they gave it to us to wow. use. Um, so it's the community that, that yeah. keeps us pushing forward. And, and you just do it That's and amazing. you deal with the problems as they come up because they do come up and you just have to I mean people keep saying think out the box but I don't think we were actually given a box when they were being issued so we can't <laughs> think outside those um, but we, we just think how are we going to solve this yeah. and let's do it and we worry about everything else afterwards because if you don't do it you'll never help anybody mm, yeah. you've got mm. to just get out there and change yeah, the world do it, do it. I, I always give the suffragettes as my as a mentor. Obviously, I don't believe in violence, mm. but it, they went out there and they got the vote. You know, they went out there and they made a change. Yeah. Or, or you know, like the um, the French Resistance, what they did in the war. I, I'm the same kind of person that you have to find an angle where you're still protecting yourself to a certain extent, but you're changing a lot of lives. Yes. So tell me about this house you were given. So, because I've always thought if I had loads of money, you know, when I become a famous celebrity, <laughs> I would buy like lots of houses mm. and I would give it to homeless people, but I would give them coaching and I would give them a way how to develop themselves. So they're running everything, but with, yeah. with some kind of support to build their self-esteem. Yeah. So what yeah. do you do in the in this house? Exactly that. Exactly that. Exactly you actually that. do yeah. that. Wow. Yeah, yes. They have mentors, and some of them will see a counsellor. And they have to pay rent. They have to have a job. They have to tidy the house, cook together, eat together, clean up together. I mean, it's a challenge. It doesn't always work as smoothly as that. But you know, it it. We've had a really successful run with it, haven't we? We've, I think yeah. we've had about housed about twenty eight. Uh, we've has 30 now. 30 and I think 20, yeah. 27 have moved on and been remained in their own place. So they've come oh, into the yeah. house from the streets, got a job, saved, started renting to their own place. and Wow. Yeah. So how many people run the Brett Foundation? Because you obviously can't do that, just the two of you, all yes. of this. Well, we do. We have another trustee, Daniela Boyd Waters. Um, and then we have managers... Liz Bull and Emma Wilkins, who are the managers of the drop-in, mm. and uh, Gary Wilkins, who's actually the manager of the house. Wow. So, yeah. And so all of this, you started all of this in a car park, and now it's developed to the extent where you've actually got houses, where you're housing people. Yeah. And, and where did you get your mentors from? Do you, and do you pay them? Or are they all volunteers? Everyone volunteers. They all we, volunteers. We don't pay anybody. Um, no, just goodwill of everybody. Um, it really is a, a community charity. It is, yeah. It, you know, everybody 
is in to help everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's just amazing. Yeah. Really, really amazing. It is amazing. I, I can't wait to visit where, the, where your house yeah. is. I mean, as I said, I didn't know any of this. And my job is to pass this on to as many people as possible. Um, anyone, as we were saying um, the other day, there was something on the Wickham site and I did a Facebook Live. There was a homeless guy who was living in a tent. Did you hear about him living in High Wickham in a tent? And people were saying, this is ridiculous, it was before the snow. And I just went on there and said, we've got to do something. But I, the guy who actually put it on, he, he didn't come back on Facebook Live. Mm, but we were saying thing. about this, that we need to do something. And I was, you know, I kept saying, and people said, let's raise some money and get him into a and b mm. and stuff like that. And it's really interesting, the, the whole thread started to become very negative about him. And I went on there and said, please, can we not judge this person? We don't know anything about him because people tend to get very negative when they don't know. It's the same with mental yeah. illness. The stigma, yes. um, and, and so what you're doing is we're breaking those barriers yeah. down yes. and, and getting the community to understand that we are responsible for each other yeah. and, and you're actually proactively doing this. Mm. Yeah. So um, how, how does it look going to look at Christmas? Have you had a Christmas yet in the house? We um, have, yeah. yes, yeah, this is our second Christmas. Um, they are wonderful. They because we do Christmas Day at our centre, so the lads in the house, because at the moment it is all gentlemen in the house, um, actually come down to the centre and they help provide Christmas to those that are still on the streets. Right. And then on oh. Boxing Day, they then have their Christmas in the house. Right. So, wow. but this is their choice. This is something they've decided they wanted to do. They wanted to help and give yeah. back. Um, Christmas Day is the only day I don't really go down mm. um, because we tend to have anybody and everybody around to our house. <laughs> well, that we can fit around the table. That's <laughs> lovely. Yes. But, yeah. So has she always been like this, Catherine? Has your mum always yeah, been Yeah, like I mean she's always time. been such a caring and generous person who will give whatever she has to everybody else. Right. Um, you've always been like that, even when we were children always wanting to give us the best and whatever we wanted, whatever, she, you know, she'd, so she'd just go above and beyond for us, so, yeah, always. And why do you think you're like that? Did you grow up, did you have a happy childhood? Were you brought up with a lot of love, would you say? Yes, yeah, mm. yeah, and, and I've always been, yeah, I, I can remember having friends, I mean, I was fully dreadful at school, but I always picked friends that nobody else wanted. Um, if somebody was on their own, that's the person I would go and right. and talk to and be friends with. <laughs> um, so I was always a bit of an unusual child. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't really care about fitting in so much. Mm. I didn't fit in. I, yeah. I've sort of grown into not fitting in really. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know how that feels. <laughs> I think it's the best but you place find to be, your own really. niche from that. I yeah. think we grow from yeah. our pain, definitely. Yes. yes. So yeah. um, what did you do before? What sort of work did you used to do? Um, I worked in the solicitor's office. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so totally different. Completely different. Completely yeah. different, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just thought, there's more to life than making money. You know? mm. Yes, money makes the world around. Money, if we had yeah. lots of money, the things I would do with yeah. it. But, you know, it, it's not the be all, end yeah. all. It's being out there, helping other people, <coughs> being there to support other people, just talking mm. to them. It, that, mm. That's... Just giving your time, yeah, mm. it's so mm. valuable. Yeah, mm. yeah it is. Mm. Well, I'm very excited about what you're doing because, as I said, this is something I've always thought because I'm a life coach. I believe that without life coaching, I wouldn't be doing anything. And I kind of, t um, my whole philosophy is you set three tiny goals a day, anyone can achieve it. Mm. What's the tiniest thing? You know, I'm talking about grants. That's my big comfort zone as well. But I'm determined by the end of the year, I'm going for three. <laughs> I've somehow created my policies and I'm going for three grants. So, um, but I think that everyone can set those three yeah. tiny little goals. Yeah. There is, when you say the word impossible, is I am possible. So yeah. you're talking to a person that believes that anything is possible. Yeah, absolutely. Anything. Yeah. So, um, and I, as I said, to me, the most important thing of pe when people are homeless 
and you've taken away the basic need, which is shelter, shelter, food, um, and water. You know, shelter is, yeah. is on the triangle, isn't the Maslow. Yeah. When you yeah. take that away, when you have to really build their self-esteem up, and yeah. that's what I've always felt would be great, is to first of all give them the home, yeah. and the water, and the food, and yeah. then every single person has talent. They've yeah. got something to offer. Yes. Yeah. And, um, we live in a world now where that's being ignored, unfortunately. Yeah, a lot of yeah. talent, um, real deep talent and skills, if they don't fit the norm, if they don't fit the age yeah. and certain things, then you, you can forget about it. Yeah. And so, yeah. to me, this is so exciting and I can't yeah. wait to talk to you about how we're going to see if we can bring on some of your residents, mm -hmm. some of the people out there, because I need hosts and presenters and... They'd love it, honestly. You know, <laughs> they would really they love would. it. Yes. I mean, I learned yeah. how to do this on YouTube. I learned how to edit on YouTube and I need an editor. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, as you say, I believe, like you, support is more important than money. Yes. Because yeah. once people come together, they can do anything. Yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, they can. Yeah. They really, really can. And, and I really, truly believe this. If there's enough people there, you can. You really can move mountains. Mm. Yeah. You really can. Nothing is too too big. And and if you can, if you can imagine it, you can make it happen. Mm. Exactly. And so you're one of these people that are coming on to moving on TV to say to people, just get out there and make a change. And yeah. you know, I was speaking to someone again the other day. He was. Um, vicar I think and he said to me Lauren you can't change the world totally I mean there's so much going on which I'm not going to go into obviously but we know there's a lot going on that we're very yeah. unhappy about and we're, we don't know what to do but you can change your own little yeah. part of it and every time you have one person they say um, a fairy gets her wings or something you know in a, in a nice positive way or Course in Miracles says that sure. you awaken yeah. Yeah. you know Course in Miracles yeah. they wait you awaken and give uh, you give to another 10,000 10, people get peace from one human being starting to feel peaceful it's like yeah. you're spreading all of this yeah. and it's kind of like people pay forward by yeah. yeah. as well yeah, yeah. wow yeah. but I think you can change the world I really believe, and that's what I'm out to try and do. Well, not, you are. Not just, no, not not just my corner. Just I'm not content with just. No, I'm not happy with just no. making head. No. I want to change the world. Right. And uh, I. Well, how are you, how are you going to do that? Well, what are your plans? Because oh gosh, um, <clears throat> such big plans. I mean, I I hope to get more followers, and if I can get more followers, if I can convert one person, and then Katie can convert one more person and their friend converts to somebody else and, and eventually when you mean got, convert can you explain uh, to, what that means? to convert as in to do good out in the world to right. put somebody else just for a moment before yourself and to bring peace and comfort to somebody else and if i do that then she does that to somebody else and eventually you've got a snow a snowball effect or, mm. or even like a mexican wave one yeah. stands up and Amazing. then it just goes round and it, mm. it comes back and i really think if you do that you can change the world mm. you can have peace mm. you can make sure that yeah. everybody in the whole world has got enough food mm. to eat that every mm. homeless person has warmth security mm. somewhere to go i i believe i've always believed in peace i mean i grew up in israel i grew up in wars and I work for peace. I did a film with children, Maiden Ed's, uh, Buck Sparks, Middlesex, with thousand kids, different religions, teaching them a song. Deep down inside, I believe that the majority of the world want to get on. They yes. don't want to fight. They mm. want peace. Yeah. But there seems to be something going on that is kind of disrupting us. Yeah. It's a very small thing yeah. that we, with enough love and enough energy, yeah. like women mm. like you, we need more like you. We yeah. need more like you and Catherine, people that have got the guts and the love and the compassion yeah. and the tenacity and focus cause, and to do all of this, to get yeah. going and to do more and more and yeah. more. And it's yeah. wonderful and I believe you can do it, as we said. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's why I thought moving on TV, to bring on more people yeah. that want to create solutions. We have to create more yeah. solutions. Yeah. And, and we have to create more, um, the younger generation have to be given opportunities 
to open their hearts more. So instead of sitting there on their computers, to get involved mm. with people, oh, yeah. with the community. Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. definitely. They're, they're very much in the eye world at the moment. It's mm. the iPad, the iPod, the iPhone. Don't get me told. And you're, you're yeah. like this, and you mm. need to just put it down and just look at the world. Look at the world. Exactly. Yes. Instead of me, 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 me. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. do have a lot of yeah. young volunteers, though. That will just yeah. volunteer off their own back. Um, that will yeah. just turn up, you know, between the ages of... 16 and I don't know 25 we have a lot of volunteers that just want to come mm. and just give their time yeah. so this has escalated yeah so quickly and so fast and sometimes things don't happen like that why do you think things don't always escalate as quickly as yours is it are you in the right place do you think do you think and maybe Maidenhead is a more cohesive community because where I am it doesn't these things seem mm. to they don't seem to grow right. like, I think it like that. Really is down firstly to the fact that we live in such a wonderful community, and secondly down to the fact that Mum is relentless with mm. getting the charity out there. And you know, fair play to her; she's done an amazing job with it. But you, you are, I think, it's fair to say, <laughs> like you just non-stop post, post video, post like, and and she has worked so hard to get that name out there and to make people not make them care because they've cared like off their own back but to make people see that there is an issue in mm. Maidenhead and together we can make a difference. Right, would you say that in the beginning you just got a whole lot of friends and people that you knew together and convinced them to do this? Um, it was me on my own. <laughs> you on your own? <laughs> it was, I was out there, yeah, night after night giving the food out from my car because mm. people didn't believe, they didn't believe that it would happen that it would take off or that the need yeah. was there. It it's been a struggle. It has been hard. Yeah. But it, it's been that it has been that relentless it has, yeah. push, 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 putting it on Facebook, talking to people, um getting into the getting the right people. I think yeah. we should do like a huge shout out for like Nigel Cohen who has been Nigel Cohen. Sorry. He's one of the trustees of Food Share. He, okay. might, he might not thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> he's, just been, he's been amazing. Um, no, and he's amazing. been a complete yeah. rock. Not just for Food Share, but he's been a, a rock for the Rep Foundation as oh, well. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I bounce ideas off him and he says, oh, yeah. He's your voice stupid. of reason. He I is think. my voice of reason. <laughs> I still go out and do it, but and then he, yeah. Yeah, he shakes his head and thinks, oh, but, I'm yeah, he's been again, just, just amazing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah but well, you're a trailblazers and yeah. you know trailblazers just go out there like, you know are you what bird sign are you by Virgo. <laughs> I think it might be a Leo. No. <laughs> Virgo. Leo. It's a natural it's a natural thing. A trailblazer you just go whoosh and keep going whoosh and as I say a lot most people think you're sure. completely insane. <laughs> but then the results well mm. I am. <laughs> you have to be a little bit I think it's 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 actually a yeah. gift. I see whatever I was given this condition as a gift. Because without it, yeah. I wouldn't be be doing anything. Yeah, I'm sitting there watching yeah. EastEnders, and oh. there wouldn't be anything. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I suffered. Well, I still do suffer with dreadful depression, um, and it was only I, I walked out of my solicitor job in 2010 because the depression. I could feel it dragging me down, and a few years before that, I had actually tried to commit suicide. A fair few times, actually, oh <laughs> sort of mm. seven, eight so times. So you've been so. through quite a lot. Yes. And yeah. so, okay, so we'll just take a break there because this is something that's just come up, which is really important. So we'll Welcome to Moving On TV, the new TV channel for us, the positive, inspirational TV channel. My name is Lauren Hope. I am the founder and CEO of Moving On TV. No one is ordinary. We're all special, unique, wonderful human beings. We're all celebrities with our own talents and strengths and dreams. Moving On TV is here for all of us. We have a book show if you wrote a book. We're looking for talent for Moving On Talent. We want to stream you. We don't want you to compete. Artists shouldn't have to compete. It's disrespectful. And we're going to produce a new musical. And you could be in it. And we're going to serialise it for everyone. We're not going to have the news. We're going to have the happy news. 
positive, inspirational, happy stories, which are actually the majority of the stories in the world that are happening all around us, except no one wants to give them to you. And of course, because we're run by solution-based people, life coaches, we want to give you the truth and to help you move on. So we want to know why these tragedies are happening all around us. Why are so many people being hit off their bicycles? What is the solution to all these problems in our world? How can we have a better world, a more peaceful world? We're looking for you. We're looking for all of you. Everyone has a unique story. We're looking for hosts, presenters, all age groups, particularly older people that are not being given any opportunities, come and work on our media. Cameramen, editor, editors, anyone who wants to work with us, and of course, sponsors, organic makeup and organic products that are helping the environment and the human race. Come on board Moving On TV, the new positive channel, the channel that gives you hope. You can contact me at Lauren with an E at movingontv.uk. Don't get depressed. Come on board Moving On TV. See you soon. Bye. Guys, so again, this is Moving On TV. We're all about solutions. We're all about love. We're all about spreading the light and what we can do to make our world a beautiful, beautiful place for the next generation and after that. Because when I go, that's what I'd like to leave. I'd like to leave some more light and to develop this light. Um, so you were telling us, but we were talking about depression and mental health issues. And as you know, that's where I come in as well. Um, I was very, very lucky to recover in a therapeutic community with that medication. And I got total inner peace and my story is out there. I'll tell you more about that another time, but this is about you. So you suffered a lot from depression before <coughs> this happened, before you started the Breath Foundation. I did, yes, yeah. To the point that I just thought, it, it, just so much darkness, I would be yeah. better off if I wasn't here. And, and I became very selfish in that I didn't think of my family and what I'd be leaving behind. It was just, they would be so much better if I wasn't here. Um, so I tried countless times to, to try to kill myself with overdoses. Um, but it just, and, and how I didn't, I really don't know. It just wasn't my time. It just wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Um, because you had a bigger job to do. I've got a bigger job to do. You job to do that. And you see, this is what I think happens to... Um, so yeah. Um, we, we go through huge amounts of pain. The people that are trailblazers, people that are going out there to change the world, they go through a huge amount of pain. And then they use that pain to find their path. Yes. Ooh. I mean, me, it's taken my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I think, you think you know what you want to do. You do it because you just think it's the right thing or your families yeah. tell you. I've always been a rebel, so I didn't. I, I've never earned money because I could never ground myself enough. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people do, and then they get so low and depressed. Yeah. And one day it gets to the point where they either have an epiphany, or they just say, right, as you said, you felt that you were being selfish. You weren't thinking about those mm. you were leaving behind. Yeah. So thank God, thank God, you yeah. you didn't go through with it. So yeah. what would you say to people out there then? that are depressed because the depression is so big there's so much of it um what would you say to them then to encourage them after what's happened with you find a group uh that goes out and helps others in particular for me homeless um but something that clicks with you something that you don't have to become involved in you can just sit and sit and watch because this is what happens at our center we've got volunteers that come that they just sit and they watch and they listen and they're almost on the, the edge mm. um, <clears throat> and then eventually something just sort of clicks and they, they begin to feel more comfortable and they start helping mm -hmm. and before you know where you are I'm not saying that you've, they've got rid of their depression but there's a little bit of a path out there's a little bit mm. of light at the end of the tunnel yes. yeah. because they're helping others and I think that's exactly. that's how you get over your depression it's it's helping others mm. giving purpose to your life yeah rather than, mm. than 
trying to muddle through mm. as best you can and helping others you can't find any better purpose and in life. I suppose because what you give you receive right mm. and, and it's very similar to the therapeutic community where I recovered yeah. because the minute that we had a support system 24 hours a day yeah. and the minute we were supporting someone else our problems became minute because yeah. you were focusing. It's all about focusing outwards. You know, obviously when you're mm. meditating and stuff, you sure. focus inwards, but we're not talking about that yeah. kind of focus. So, so basically, that's what you feel. So if they get more involved, then their focus is going to go outwards towards yeah. the people that need them. And we have big hearts. People have yeah. big... That's why we have a heart and our hearts yeah. open up. And then we share. We we want to share, and then nothing. Then we're invincible. Yeah. Oh. No one can touch yeah. us, and particularly women. You know, they yes. say you, if you get about ten women in a room, they will change the world. Yes. They will change the world. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And what about yourself, Catherine? How did you get involved? Where Where did you get involved in this? Um. Well, I mean, I used to help every now and then. I think it stopped when I went to university. Um, and I think a trustee left and he needed three, mum needed three, she had Danny had a boy bought his and herself and they needed three to keep running uh, so I just said okay I'll do it thinking you know nothing of it really I'd just help every now and then mm. <laughs> I'd just be a trustee on paper um, but I don't know it very very quickly consumed my life and I just fell in love with the work, I fell in love with the people, it's a lifestyle and yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world, I absolutely love it. It's, 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 it's fantastic because another thing I want to see is because I grew up in the Middle East, it's the mm. kind of community it that, is, like yeah. that where you can wander into each other's houses yes, and yeah. you're never alone because yeah. loneliness, yeah. loneliness is a terrible, terrible killer, it's definitely what leads to depression and right. mental illness so yeah. you're eradicating that yeah you're eradicating yeah. it not because you've just got the day center where people can go yeah. during the day so can they go to the houses that are different times do they volunteer different times of the evening and support the um, the people that are in there or yeah i mean we're, we're really well. flexible it's whatever suits you yeah, I just um, along. because everybody's individual, and that—that's where I like to think that as a charity we are unique. In yeah. that instead of somebody coming to us and saying, "Oh no, we can't help you. You can't help us because you have to be able to do this, this, or this," or "We can't help you because you're not this, this, or this," we just open the door, open our arms and yeah. our hearts, and say, "Come on in. How can we get you to fit in? How, mm. how can we fit in with you rather than mm. you fit in with us?" Mm. And we we all muddle along it really is a family it is a family it is a family fantastic Definitely. and so before we ask you again just to give us the information of because there's so many people that are not looking forward to christmas i'm not looking forward to christmas it's not my favorite time of the year anymore because i don't have that support system that i you know the family or whatever um and also because i i don't actually feel um, that it's the right thing to go out and buy a lot of presents anymore. I think we need yeah. to contribute to those that haven't got. And I done it's a beautiful, beautiful video on YouTube. Have you seen it? With um, this lovely guy who went around the streets uh, in New York. Uh, he got people socks and shoes yes. yeah. from Amazon. Literally, I don't know how he did it. He really did it really quickly. And, he, and that is what we should be focusing on. Yeah. Instead of yeah. buying loads and loads of things that nobody needs, mm. focus on doing little things. Like sure. um, whenever I see someone homeless, I always buy them a meal. Yeah. You don't give them money, no. you buy them a meal. Yeah. But now, I don't think you can even consider someone being on the streets in the snow. I mean, yeah. why is this Charles Dickens, yeah. the little match girl? I mean, it, it just it just can't happen in our time. It can't. I know. Yeah. It's unbelievable that it does, isn't it? Is it actually? Are there actually people sleeping on the street in the snow still? Yes. Around here. Yes. Well, I mean, they open up the cold weather protocol. The council initiate uh, when it gets to a certain temperature. The cold weather protocols. So, and I think it's everywhere across the right. UK. It's the, it's the borough. So they so do have somewhere up. to go. They have to open up the doors. Mm. But I think, you know, they do it in High Wycombe, they do it in Slough, they do it in yeah. Windsor. Like, right, it's, yeah. It's, so um, people do get a choice. But you see, the thing is, Catherine, is um, if their self-esteem is very, very low, 
Yeah, then they're not going to take that choice. No, and there are no. some of our guys that won't, and they will sleep on the on the, the yeah. snow. Sometimes they can't snow. get somewhere local, and they would rather mm. be on the streets where they feel safer. Yeah, on the streets they know where they feel safer than than going too far away. And we had one gentleman who um, he got moved to Southall, and he was there for a night, and then he came back. Because he said he couldn't, he'd gone, but there was yeah, no food. He didn't him. know where the soup kitchens were. He didn't know if there was a food bank. He didn't know where anything they was that could him help out. him. He just got sent, mm. and, and that was it. And he felt alone and vulnerable, so he came back. He would rather stay on the street, on the streets, in the snow. Mm. But he knew where he could get food. He knew that we cared about him. That we'd go yeah. out and we'd check on him, mm. and we do. You know, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night, yeah. we're out there. Somebody hadn't seen him, so out, yeah. out we go to try and find them mm. to make sure they're okay. Do they need more sleeping bags, covers? Oh, tents burnt down, mm. and yeah, yeah. Like eleven o'clock at night, we're in a park <laughs> with torches in the bushes. But you just I care it's because you just amazing. care so deeply amazing. for these people yeah. because you spend so much time with them and you get to know them and they become your friends and then they become family and you would just do whatever you can to just mm. I mean there I yeah. there are things I would drop everything if one of them called me and they were stuck somewhere I would just drop everything to, to yeah, make amazing. sure they were okay yeah. Yeah, amazing and you see the thing is a lot of them have mental illness they're very vulnerable yeah, and they, are, they shouldn't yeah. be living yeah. like that they no, shouldn't be living not. like that there yeah, should be no. some kind of something that you yeah know, there should be yeah. more protection that should be yeah. i mean instead of giving people too many drugs there should be more therapies well you know don't get me started yeah. and all we, of that we need community houses mm. we, we need a big house where you've got older people who are on their own and have no support network mm -hmm. living in these homes where the rooms are filled with people who've got mental health with youngsters with addicts and things like yeah. that and i know this sounds really weird and out there Utopia. but but the older people will look after them yeah. and the younger people and the people that have got mental health they crave this acceptance mm. of how they are mm. regardless of the fact they've got an addiction or they've got a mental health issue they just want to belong and of course if they you do. have this community yeah. house they want you've got that commitment and yes. responsibility yeah. and structure yes. so it's all in my car it's all the tools yeah. i learned in the community and yeah. they don't have any work and you need all of these things. You need structure, you need uh, community, you need a sense of responsibility yeah. and a connection to yeah. other human beings. Yeah. That's what you need. And when yeah. people are put together, they will take care of each other. It's a natural yeah. thing for us yeah. to yeah. want to look after each other and what's missing. Particularly, I live in a village where really no one cares of it. When I was in that wheelchair, I was on my own. My husband oh. went to work. He had to go to work at some point and I was in that house on my own and no one came to see me. And I'm the kind of person that I literally pushed myself out the door and I went all around the neighbourhood and introduced myself and invited people around. This time last year, I think, it was, yeah, it was more or less this time last year, inviting people to come in. Yeah. And that's not the kind of community that we want. Mm, yeah. No, we we kind of adopted a 92 year old lady um, because when I was in the hospital I met her and she had fallen and she was lying for four days four days oh. no one found her and she was great great that she was alive so when we came out of hospital she's become I ring her now every couple of days I keep an eye on her she's an amazing woman she doesn't want the help yeah. but I keep an eye on her yeah. she knows that me and Martin are there for her yeah. And, and this is what I'm craving as I get older. I want to live in a community where everybody yeah. cares about each other. Yeah. I'd love like yeah. you can go in and meditate together and, and have a, like a, a hall where you can do dancing and sing everything you want. Oh, and yeah. then you've got a community where we all live together and we have a holistic doctors and everything yeah. we need. So everyone is there for each other and all the animals yeah. can run free and children. Yes. And that's what I would, I, I'm the same. I would love yeah. to grow old in a place like that. I don't like yeah. the way we live. And yeah. if it wasn't for my work, I would be very depressed. So as you say, yeah. your work lifts you and, and gives, yeah. you, gives you a feeling you want to be here. Yeah. Yes. We need yeah. to know that we're needed. We need to know yes. that we have a path in life. Yes. And yes. that's where yeah. we're going. And 
So it's an amazing, amazing to have you here today. And just Thank before you. we finish, um, so what what are your plans for next year? What what what's coming? Oh gosh, <laughs> um, a new centre, yeah. um, another house. Um, I would love a, a mobile catering service yeah. where we can we hear that somebody needs help in another part of the borough or another town we can go and rather than being from the back of my car or your car yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we've actually got proper facilities where we can go out and, and just pull people in and say here have this to eat now and, and just reach out more people and just get more people following yeah. us and mm -hmm. get more people involved and just grow bigger and bigger so that we can actually make the changes yeah. that we, mm -hmm. we want to make. And I think you will achieve that, don't you? Absolutely. I think when you put yeah, your mind definitely. to anything, the mountains just move, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you would like to say into the camera now, uh, anyone who wants to volunteer, or wants to get involved over the whole of the Christmas and New Year period, what do they need to do? Right, you can email please at uh, susanbrett4 at aol.co.uk and somebody will get back to you and uh, we would love you on board be fantastic thank you fantastic and you can come on board for christmas i know it's only yes. two weeks away less yes. than that actually yeah yes. less than two weeks yeah. away time's just gone nowhere you can come on board just like that Absolutely. yeah <laughs> reminds me of when i went to america people know i was on a radio station called world most amazing people <coughs> i just walked in and started working there they just literally, there was no checks, there was nothing, they just yeah, trusted amazing. me. Yeah. So this is what we need to bring back. I'm the same. Yeah. If you said to me tomorrow I want to host programs, I'm not going to put you through anything. You just come yeah. on and you host programs. Yeah. And so we're, we're the revolution. <laughs> we're bringing it back. We're bringing back, you know, lack of fear, lack of, you know, just get out there and do what you can to change the world. So you've been watching the community show on Moving On TV uh, with Catherine, with Sue Brett and Catherine Brett? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you run the yes. Brett Foundation in Maidenhead and uh, you know where we are if you want to come on board and tell us all the exciting wonderful things you're doing to change the world even if it's just something around your neighbourhood or anything you are unique everything you do as long as it's good for you and good for the community and good for the world then that's what we're looking for so namaste have a beautiful day. Thank you very much.